Hello and welcome to this week's devotional. Uh, I pray things are going well for you and that uh, you've been able to enjoy the summer and all the beauty of creation that we uh, are blessed with here in the North Woods. Um, I recently heard someone say that the reason that we have worship in, in the form of singing and music is to prepare our hearts for the sermon. And while that seems like a reasonable explanation, um, it, it somewhat infers that corporate singing isn't necessary or, valu or a valuable part of Christian or church worship um, on its own. It, it really only has value when it's attached to a sermon. Um, and so uh, I don't believe that that's uh, the biblical model that's set before us. And so really, how, how are we supposed to think about corporate worship? What, what is, why do we do it, right? Why do we have corporate worship um, if it's not for just preparing our hearts for the message? Um, well, listening to a sermon is generally the exalting of God's word uh, to be rooted in our lives and to move us into maturity in Christ. Singing in worship is to God and for God. It's something that we participate in together in exalting God. Um, and that's uh, portrayed for us and modeled for us throughout scripture. We see in Deut Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And so this command is to all of Israel to do this together, to love God with all of their being. And so their focus is to God and for God. And the psalmist writes in Psalm 50, or 95, 1 through 3, Come, let us shout joyfully to the Lord, shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. Let's enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let's shout triumphantly to him in song. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. And so again, we see the psalmist uh, in song that let us shout triumphantly, let us lift together in one song in thanksgiving, um, the joy of our salvation. Um, it's to God and it's for God. And even into Revelation, we see Revelation 4, 10 and 11. The 24 elders fall down before the one seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne and say, Our Lord and God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they exist and were created. And so all throughout scripture, we see the coming together of believers to worship God, to exalt God, uh, his praises to him and for him. And as we, we do that it, as a church, um, we point to Christ um, because Christ is our mediator between man and God. And as we're pointed to Christ, we're ushered into God's presence as Jesus, the mediator, he ushers us into God's presence. And so we see 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. And in James 4, verse 8, he writes, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And so when we are pointed to Christ, we draw near to God, and, and Christ ushers us into God's presence when we are focusing on repentance, as we're focusing on the significance of Christ and his sacrifice on our behalf, the forgiveness of our sins. We're drawing near to God, and he's drawing near to us. And, Jesus. and we're corporately singing the greatness of who God is to God himself. As we sing corporately together, then we also are expressing unity as the body of Christ. Um, Romans 15, 5 and 6 say, Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with one mind and one voice. 
And so we see unity being built um, together as we worship one God with one mind, with one voice. Jesus tells us that Christian unity is one of the ways that God reveals himself to the world. So as we're worshiping one God with one voice, drawn into his presence through Jesus Christ, united together, we are telling something to the world about who God is and who Jesus is, and God reveals himself. And Jesus tells us this in his prayer for uh, his disciples and, and for us today as his disciples in John 17, verse 21. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. All right, so as we're united, as we are one, just as the Father and the Son are one, the world may believe that Jesus came for them, that he died on their behalf, forgive their sins, they would have eternal life with him. And, and lastly, uh, Paul tells us that we are filled with the Holy Spirit when we sing. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19 say, And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. So as we sing, as we worship together, uh, we're being filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit's work in us reminds us of God's promises, God's seal of our salvation, uh, convicts us of sin, um, transforms us into Christ-likeness. And so all these things are, are taking place when we sing together corporately. We're exalting God, singing praises to God, for God, being drawn into his presence through Jesus Christ and being shaped and conformed to be like Christ through the Holy Spirit. So our singing in worship is an essential expression of the church. It isn't merely accompaniment to our encounter with God through the message. It is the context in which we encounter God. And so my hope is that the church, you and I included, would flourish in our faith through worship, not simply endure our time of singing until we get to the sermon, but that we would embrace our time together as God intended to be unified in glorifying God through song, drawn into his presence through Jesus Christ, and transformed by his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed week, and I look forward to seeing you Sunday.